Hello everyone, welcome to the newest edition of the alumni webinar series. Today's webinar, Small Business Marketing, Creating Customer Love, is brought to you by Syracuse University's Offices of Career Services and Alumni Engagement. My name is Jenna Turman. I'm the Assistant Director for Alumni Programs in the Office of Career Services. I'll be your host and moderator today. Before we begin the presentation, I would just like to share a few housekeeping tips and reminders. Today's webinar will be recorded. You'll be able to access the webinar on the Career Services website or on Syracuse University's YouTube page. We have a dedicated playlist for the alumni webinar series. Please limit the number of browsers you have open during the presentation. This will help everything run more smoothly. Oh, where was I? Oh, questions are welcomed and encouraged. Uh, please type them into the chat area and Hillary will address them as they come up. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our presenter, Hillary Berman. She is the founder of Popcorn and Ice Cream, the author of Customer LLC, the Small Business Guide to Customer Engagement and Marketing, and a Google Small Business Advisor. She brings experience working in and for businesses of varying sizes to her small business clients. Prior to launching Popcorn and Ice Cream, she worked with her husband to build and grow a financial services business. She's a 1999 graduate of the Newhouse School, and she went on to earn an MBA at the University of Maryland's Robert H. Smith School of Business. In today's webinar, she will teach you everything you need to know about customer. I'm excited to be here. This is my favorite subject, talking about creating customer love. Um, before we dive in, I just wanted to share a little bit about my background and where I've been since graduating. Um, I graduated in 99 from Newhouse with a degree in advertising. I chose that, um, I chose that major because it, I thought it allowed me to combine the ability to be creative with something more practical and business oriented. Um, even though I've strayed from traditional advertising, that does seem to be the case that it did set me out on that foot, which is great. Um, after, after graduation, I took the path that I think um, everyone I knew in New House was traveling, which was moving to New York and um, going to a big Madison Avenue ad agency. I went to Gray Group. Um, I worked on huge brands. I worked on Hasbro and M&M Mars, and I was in the room when Febreze got its name. Um, I hated every second of it. Big business was just not for me. Um, even though I followed the path that I thought I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I, um, it was the height of the dot-com era. I don't know how old the folks are on the call, if that completely dates me even more. Um, but I went to a dot-com. It was essentially Facebook, but it was before its time. It was the same concept, the same functionality, um, but people weren't online like they're online now. So when that went under, as um, pretty much most of the dot-coms were at that time, um, I took the opportunity to move back to the D.C. area where I'm originally from. I took a marketing job um, at a startup technology company um, that gave me a really great foundation in technology. And then I moved on to, it also set me up a couple years later to move on to a small but really quickly growing PR firm that was then diversifying and becoming more marketing communications oriented. When I started there, I was employee number 18. When I left seven years later, we had 75. So it was really growing. Um, quite a bit. While I was there, I, I had the opportunity to work on big companies and small companies. I had what I called my resume builder clients, um, the big names that look really great on your resume, the companies that have huge budgets. Um, but I was the person in the agency that took on all the smaller clients and startups that nobody else wanted. I love them. Um, I found I love the challenge. I love the opportunity. I love the creativity that it gave me. Um, along the way, I went to business school. As um, Jenna mentioned, I went to Maryland Smith School of Business. Uh, I went part-time at night because the economy was eh, questionable and I was afraid of leaving my career. Um, it was awesome. I did it not because I wanted to change career paths, but I wanted to get that broader perspective into how marketing impacted other areas of business and how my work was being impacted by other things, whether it was product development or operations, customer service all of those things, and it did that, and it, for, it was a really great, great foundation for more entrepreneurship. Um, along the way, my husband started his own business, and <clears throat> at the time, I was trying to help him find a consultant to help him define his brand, his customer experience, his lead generation strategy, um, and I was finding really awesome, creative folks 
I was finding designers and web developers and copywriters, um, but there was no one to help him sort out um, how to use those talented individuals. I ended up, everything was, all the companies were either too big or they were too expensive. Um, and so I ended up in the process leaving my job and going to work with him um, to do that. And I realized how big the need really was for this service. There were so many small businesses that really needed um, needed the help and needed the that piece of expertise at a price that they could afford. Um, so in 2011, I started Popcorn and Ice Cream. Um, we've Since then, we've worked with more than 50 different kinds of companies. We've worked with bricks and mortar retailers, service providers, new products, you name it. Um, in 2014, we launched in-person workshops to teach small business owners in the DC area how to do customer-centric marketing on their own. Um, and then earlier this year, at the request of many folks, we, I published my first book um, because a lot of folks said, well, how can I get your perspective on my shoulder um, and get it at a really low price? Because as for many small businesses, even affordable consulting is still out of reach. So this year, um, in July of this year, the book published, and now it's on available on Amazon or directly through our website. A quick little plug for it. Um, but anyway, so that's sort of how I got to where I am and where how how I've landed on working with so many small business owners and my specific focus on customer engagement. So with all of that as background, um, let's actually dive into why you dialed in today. Um, so today's customer, and I'm not sure if folks on the call are small business owners themselves or work with small business owners, but today's customer and every individual is more is busier and more distracted than ever. Um, we live in an on-demand, need for instant solutions world. Customers have more options um, than they've ever had before. They can buy online from someone that was never a competitor a few years ago. They're comparing prices while they're standing in your store. Um, so it's it's tough, right? How can small businesses compete now? You look online, and these are just a few of the screenshots that I grabbed of the hundreds of thousands um, of articles preaching must-do tactics, guaranteed ways to grow your business. You know all these different everyone's per, everyone's opinion on what you have to do. I I don't agree. I don't think there is any silver bullet for any business. Um, every business is different, even if you have the same business in two different cities those businesses are different. Um, but what is consistent is that everyone has to, every small business to succeed has to build relationships and stay top of mind with the customers that you have. Um, it's really easy to get caught up in the newest social media platform, whether it's, um, you know, it was Instagram. First it was Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest, and then it was Instagram and Snapchat. You, mean, you name it, right? But or feel maybe you're feeling really compelled, you have to run a sale to drive quick revenue, especially this time of year. But when the campaign ends or the newest social media platform is out there, then what? Um, to really successfully compete, what we have found is that you've, it's gotta be about the customers. That's the engagement. Um, that's where the, the focus really needs to be. Um, these are just a few of the numbers. Um, it just it, it's, it's remarkable how big the need for and the impact is of customer engagement. Um, I was saying customers have more choice than ever, um, but good experience, good customer service, those contribute directly to that customer relationship. They have, and then indirectly, they contribute to the buzz that's generated, the referrals, the sales. Um, customers expect more from small businesses. The, um, I love the 72% of consumers are willing to pay more for a local business in exchange for better goods and services, and 96% feel small businesses do a better job when it comes to customizing goods and services to meet their needs. So they're also willing to pay for that. Um, and they they pay for it, and then they repay you from their referrals and their online reviews. There's, um, there's a ton of buzz these days about customer experience, user experience, UX, CX, if there are any technology folks on the call. Um, it really is the age of the customer. I have seen it in article after article of what to expect for 2017. Um, it's what we've been seeing for a while. Um, it's been coming. So what is customer engagement though? How can you how can you truly connect with your customers? Um, I love this quote from Maya Angelou. I'm sure everyone has seen it before, but 
to me, this is the heart of customer engagement, right? It's leaving customers with a feeling, with a connection to your company, with a connection to your brand. Um, and the experience, that customer experience buzzword, that's just, that's one critical component, but that's not the same as true engagement and true relationship building. So the companies, whether they're big or small, that are really succeeding with this are the ones that provide a good experience, but then go further, that truly make meaningful connections with customers and leave them with this feeling of loyalty and appreciation for that brand. Um, and really, that can happen at every any single level of your business. Today, a lot of times I hear small business owners say, oh, my engagement is really high. I get a lot of retweets on Twitter. I have a lot of likes on Facebook. Um, that's great, and that's one level of connection, um, but that's certainly not all there is. The, the true engagement and the, the true relationships, they take more. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot very expensive. It doesn't have to take a ton of energy, um, and we'll go into how to make it happen, but the, the best engagement happens when you make those connections, and it can come from everyday operations, from how someone answers the phone. Um, it can be a special thank you gift, absolutely, Every opportunity, every layer of your business is an opportunity to engage and to make those connections with your customers. Um, so how do, you, how do you go about making customer engagement a part of your business? It's hard when you have a marketing plan that most of the time marketing plans don't include customer engagement. They talk about lead generation, they talk about advertising, they talk about PR. They don't necessarily talk about customer engagement. Um, but as with everything in business, a plan is critical. Um, the first step truly is to take a step back and decide to be customer oriented. Um, this means flipping your business on its head, looking at, your, looking at the whole experience of working with you or buying from you to the customer's perspective. It's an outside in approach and then walking through each and every aspect, customer facing aspect of your business and even the internal internal operations, but looking at all of those things um, and saying, how can I connect more deeply with my customers? Um, how, where, what are ways where I can go a plus one, a plus one? Um, and making sure everyone on your team is then aware of this plan and on board with it, this approach, so that everyone is singing the same tune um, and then implementing one thing at a time. You don't have to then go from zero to 60 all at once. Do one thing, then add another thing, then add another thing. I'm a huge believer in getting something in place, systematizing it, and then moving on to the next thing and layering the next thing on. Um, also, consider how your customers are responding to your engagement. Um, it may be in client retention. It might be in increased purchases. It might not necessarily be a direct compliment or a review on your on a Google Plus or on Yelp, although that might be it. Um, so look at how they're responding two different ways that you're trying to connect with them. Um, so that's a general approach. Let's get, I wanna get specific with a couple of different ideas um, to sort of give you some examples of things that we've seen that have worked really well. So as I said, there's, there's a million different ways that you could possibly engage. These are a couple of categories that I've seen work very well. Um, on communications, newsletters are great. Small business owners are really good at sending out monthly newsletters that are all about them. Um, but communications goes well beyond the mass mailing. Um, personalization is all the rage. You can personalize in very automated ways that still look incredibly personal. Um, you can also go offline. Consider sending a handwritten thank you note to someone for a purchase. If you're a service company, um, you can send reminders to your customers when it's time for their next appointment. Um, you want to do this, if you take that approach, you want to do it with the customer's best interest in mind so that it doesn't come off as salesy and it, it's more helpful. I think about, my favorite example of this is the place where I get my hair cut. I get an automated email from them six weeks after I was there last time. I know it's automated. I know it's all booked into the system, but without fail, I'm having a lousy hair day or it's, you know, they're coming soon, but it gives me, it's a reminder to me, it gives me a link to directly book an appointment and get right on their calendar again, um, or the cut, or the phone number's right there. It just, it makes it very easy for me as a customer, 
and it gives them the opportunity to sell me again and engage and say, hey, we're thinking about you, even though it's automated. Totally fine. Um, you can also implement, um, a lot of times people say, well, what do you mean operations? How, how do I implement customer engagement and experience into my operations? It comes with a little bit of customer love. It comes with looking at your customer service process and your sales process. Um, my favorite example in this one is there's a DC, um, and this is not someone, this is not a client, it's not even someone that I've worked with, but I just, I heard the story and I love it. Um, it's a DC-based family photographer, and she does a ton of work with families and especially newborns. And if there are any moms on the call, you'll know that <clears throat> your hands are not looking your best when you're changing diapers and doing nonstop uh, baby laundry. Um, I have three kids, so I can attest to that. But she's this photographer knows that her mom's hands show up in a lot of baby photo shoots. So to help their custom, help her customers love their pictures even more, she sends when a session is booked with her, she sends the mom a gift certificate for a manicure um, at a salon in their neighborhood so that they can get ready for their photo shoot and they're going to look great. And so they've now engaged with her, they feel great about working with her, and they feel great about how they're how they're looking in their photos. It's a $20 investment in usually a, at least several hundred dollar client, but usually several thousand dollars. Um, money very well spent by this photographer. People love it, love it, swear by her. Um, saying thank you. When's the last time that a business stopped and said thank you for your business to you? Um, or thanked you for your online review. It's really, it's hard for small business owners. As a small business owner myself, I know it's hard to make time for it. Um, and watching other folks do it, it's, it's hard, but it is so very much appreciated and it is worth, it is worth the little time investment. So that might be a simple email that you send. It might be a phone call. It might be a token gift that you send someone. We usually send out a tin of cookies if we get a referral for a new client. Um, we'll send the, the person that referred us a tin of cookies from someone, a, a bakery that is also a client, because we are always happy to support our own. Um, but just something that says, thank you, I really appreciate your business, and I appreciate your confidence in us. Um, I know of, of um, a financial services company that they're managing a lot of money for clients, so a token gift, like a gift card or something like that, doesn't really make sense for them when they get a new client, but what they do is to say thank you for a referral, they make a donation to a charity that their client is, the referring client is involved in in their name and say, I really, you know, we appreciate the referral and so we're supporting something that's important to you. Um, they, I know they have rarely donated to the same charity twice and it's just a really, it's a great way for them to give back and again, deepen those relationships and deepen those connections with their customers. Um, this time of year, <laughs> I talk about this all year long, not just this time of year, but we're, small businesses tend to be pretty good at sending out holiday cards this time of year, but we can get as small business owners way beyond the seasonal holiday card. Um, there are lots of quote, I put it in quotes, holidays, because there are celebrations and observances for absolutely everything. There is National Clam Chowder Day, there is National Hugging Day, um, it's actually really funny. I did a talk on um, customer service once, and it happened to be National Get to Know Your Customer Day. So I mean, there is like there is a day for absolutely everything. They they clutter up everyone's Facebook feeds. Um, finding ways to make sensibly tie into holidays or the supposed holidays, it can really help you stand out. It can help you be a little different. Right now. You know, everyone's mailboxes are cluttered with catalogs and cards, and while they're really nice, and I am fully supportive of holiday cards, and ours are going out next week too, uh, there are ways to stand out throughout the year. So, for example, since we only work with small, we're a small business, and we only work with small businesses, a couple of years ago we sent a um, fresh box of Crayola crayons to our clients and friends to help them celebrate National Small Business Month, encouraging them to draw their next great idea. Um, our company name, Popcorn and Ice Cream, and there's obviously a story there. If you go to popcorn-icecream.com, it's right on the homepage. But um, 
we hosted a few years back, there's National Popcorn Poppin' Month. We hosted a popcorn happy hour for folks. It was There was no education, there was no sales pitch. It was just something fun to get folks together over a beer and some popcorn to hang out. Um, conveniently, we had a client that owned a bar, so we could do it at theirs. Again, patronizing those we love, um, which deepens that engagement even more. I will say one word of caution on this one. Be careful with the holidays or celebrations that you might choose to align with. Um, there are so there are holidays, there are events, there are observances that I have seen too many businesses, big and small, um, try to connect their business with. Nine, you know, this year in 9/11, Walmart had this horribly tacky display. Um, that 9-11 is a tough one for most businesses to tie into. There's no need for it. Um, I saw this horrible, horrible sale associated with Martin Luther King's birthday once that is not even appropriate to repeat. You know, so it's I'll share the, I'll share any number of these missteps offline with folks if you're interested, but they're they're really cringeworthy. So just be careful with finding holidays that are either fun or appropriate for your business to tie into. Uh, and again, this time of year, that's, you know, it's a little bit different this time of year. But the other thing is looking at your clients' milestones. So we're very good as small businesses to recognize our own milestones. If anyone has their own small business or you're patronizing others, I'm sure you've seen, oh, it's our five-year anniversary. Come celebrate with us. Um, we're two years in business. We're 20 years in business. And, and that's nice, and those are wonderful. Um, but what are ways that maybe you can connect with your customers on their milestones or their anniversaries? Um, it might be sending a new baby gift. It might be recognizing a new job or a retirement. Um, I know a dentist who actually, someone I met at, at Syracuse who went on to dental school and he has a dental practice up in Connecticut and it's incredible how that practice engages with their customers. Um, and they're little, it's a pediatric dentist. So when their customers or their patients lose a tooth, or they stop sucking their thumb, they are engaging with them and really making themselves as a practice a part of their patients' lives, um, and their patients love it. They're sharing it on Facebook, the patients are sharing it on Facebook, the practice is sharing their, their patients' achievements on Facebook, um, the referrals are through the roof, it's just, it's not about how many years this practice has been in business, it's about how many teeth their patients have lost or how many kids have stopped, stopped sucking thumbs or dropped their pacifiers and all things related to teeth and dental health, but really focused on the patients themselves. Um, and it's made a world of difference. Their business has grown and the practice has, has grown really leaps and bounds. Um, so I know what you're saying. You're going, this all sounds really good. It sounds like a lot of money. It sounds like a lot of work. Um, and it, in some ways it is and it can't be, but it doesn't have to be, um, especially if you do one thing at a time and you recognize that you're not in it alone. Um, as an entrepreneur, you have the opportunity to invest sweat equity or real dollars. Even small do you know, small amounts or large amounts can make a huge difference. Um, and it's up to you and your business how much you want to invest and where you want to invest. So um, I know a lot of times, though, small business owners, they tell me, well, I'm at a disadvantage. I can't compete with the big guys. They have all these resources. They have all these... They have all this technology, they have all these people, they have all this money, but I actually think when it comes to customer relationships and customer engagement, that small businesses are at a major advantage to the large businesses. Um, because customers have already said, we already looked at those numbers, that small businesses are better at connecting, they're better at customer service, they're better at customer experience, um, they're willing, and again, they're willing to pay for those things. And being small, you have the agility to really deliver on that. You have the opportunity to come up with a great idea and move really quickly to implement it. You don't need a whole bunch of approvals. You don't need to roll out to thousands or millions of customers. You can try an idea with a handful of customers, see how it works. You can do it quickly. Um, and you, can, you also have the opportunity to really love on your customers one at a time or a few at a time. You don't have to ask permission. You don't have to get your boss to say, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You can have additional budget. Um, being small, there's really a lot of opportunity to connect very personally and one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there are also tools that make it easy. 
right? There's all these web tools that make it much easier to make it happen because a lot of times folks go, well, how am I supposed to keep track of all these things? There's, I have all these clients, I have all these customers, and how do I know when it's their birthday? How do I know, you know, whatever. Um, but there are so many online tools now, which is awesome because no matter what your budget is, whether you need a tool that's free or can scale with you, there is something out there. Um, for email, I love MailChimp. It's free, up to 2,000 subscribers. There is Constant Contact. Um, there are, there's Aweber. There's, I mean, there's a ton of different email tools that are out there to help you get your message out there. <coughs> CRM and marketing automation tools, I link those together because a lot of times they are connected, but Contactually is awesome. Um, it's for keeping track of customer details. Um, if you're looking to do marketing automation, which can also be highly personalized and help you make really great connections. Um, uh, can, oh, can, I'm sorry, Contactually is the one that I love for marketing automation. Insightly is also phenomenal for CR, basic, basic CRM. Um, but they're both really, they're just, they're great tools. You can scale with them. There are of course bigger ones. There's Salesforce and whatnot, but those are much bigger and out of reach and not necessarily necessary for most small businesses, but it depends on your size. It depends on your scale. Um, there are tools that can help you um, send out handwritten notes. You can have someone else write your notes for you. Hello Bond is one of the companies um, that you can make snail mail easier on yourself. You type it, they write it, they put it in the mail. Um, so there are some super complex systems. There are much more simple systems. Um, you can choose whichever one you want and works for your price point. Um, when it comes to printed materials, again, being small, you can get printed, you can get print materials, you can get branded swag, you can do something really fun. Um, of course, I love supporting my local printer, but there are tons of online companies that are super cheap to help you print out materials. Um, or I have, I know, um, a physical therapy practice that their new clients, every time they have a new patient or client family that comes on, they get a little swag bag from their, from their, ther that's put together by their therapist for them. So the, the practice has a bag that's branded with practice info. And then the therapist can pull from lots of different things that makes it fun and appropriate for that kid. It might be, um, a therapy ball, it might be crayons and a coloring or activity book. They usually include some hand cream or a Starbucks gift card for mom and dad. You know, there's different things in there, but it's it's small and they've gotten a lot of their materials at very low cost from online, online places. Um, Oriental Trading, if you're doing stuff with kids or holiday decorations, Oriental Trading is an awesome go-to. Um, it's really cheap. It is not a small business, but Sometimes we have to rely on the big ones too. Um, even if you're not looking to go online or you're not super tech savvy, start with a paper notebook. Start with an Excel spreadsheet just as a place to keep notes. Um, the important thing is the engagement that you're doing, not the fancy tool that you're putting in place. Um, the other thing, speaking of kids, don't I don't know if there are parents on the call, but um, you have the opportunity to, I'm not suggesting any child labor or anything like that, but you do have the opportunity to call on your extended team and your family um, to help you out. This is my now 10 year old. I think he was eight and a half when we took this picture, but he was helping stuff our New Year's cards um, last year, or the year before. So, and he called it an internship and thought he was really helping mom and I got envelopes stuffed and licked and everybody was happy. Um, so you have a lot of resources as a small business that you can call on um, and you're not limited to how many employees are on your team or how much budget you have. There are lots of different ways to get things done. Um, that's sort of the, the key that I want people to take away. Um, so a lot of times people go, well, I'm the owner of the company. Do I have to be the one out there? I'm the one that has to be in front of people. And uh, I actually completely disagree. I think the owner, um, owners of companies are wearing so many hats and pulled in so many different directions. Yes, as an owner, you need to set the direction and guide your team. Um, but everyone who's involved in your business has the opportunity to engage and make a difference on that customer relationship. Um, it might be just how they answer the phone. Um, it could be 
your process by which you work and they engage with you, but everyone has that, that ability. Um, when everyone on the team has the customer centric approach though, and they're telling the same story and living your brand message and delivering great customer service, the impact on the, on your company and on your reputation as the owner too, is even stronger. Um, but I, you know, it, it has to come from top down in terms of the message, but it's definitely not the owner has to do everything. Um, not even close. And when you've made that customer centric thinking more a part of your every day, the engagement comes naturally. Um, it doesn't have to be forced. It doesn't have to be scripted. Although there can be parts of the process that are very scripted. Um, customers are really quick to sniff out companies that really care and where it is a part of the fabric of their business from one that's just marketing where, Oh, thanks for the referral. Here's a coupon. Um, where it just feels like marketing um, that when you have it as part of the fabric of your business, though, it will come naturally. And also it can be unplanned. It may be just something that happens off the cuff. And, um, it, you know, just yesterday we, I was with a client receiving an award at an awards luncheon and someone else next to me said, you know, we really ought to send her flowers. And because that's just top of mind and how we, how we work and how we think. And we did. And by the time she got home from the luncheon, thanks to, Urban Stems, another small business here in DC, she had flowers on her doorstep. Um, it, it wasn't planned, it wasn't part of our process necessarily, but it was just a way to say it was top of, it came to top of mind because it's part of who we are um, and what folks do. It, the other piece of things is not all engagement is equal. So you don't, I think small business owners a lot of times wait until they have a program exactly perfect and scripted and it can be applied to each and every customer equally. Um, it doesn't have to be. Great engagement can be, it can be a totally scripted program, um, or it could be something that's rolled out to a single customer, a handful of customers, um, whatever works. There's no, it, it's more about making a difference for those clients and those customers than being so, so perfect. Um, and the other thing is that just your customers or your clients are probably not all created equal. There are some clients who generate substantially more revenue for you. There are some who are refer much more frequently and it's okay if you love on them and engage with them a little bit more than somebody else. Um, it's not, it, it's not that you want to ignore the others, but it's okay to love on some a little more than others. That's totally totally fine. Um, and again, as if, because it happens in an off the cuff way, sometimes that's just going to happen naturally. Um, so as your company grows, depending whether, you know, you might be a one person operation today, you might be a 300 person operation today, and then you continue to grow. So does your customer engagement, right? You want to continuously, the, the best part, the customer engagement and the experience that works the best, is when it continues to surprise customers. When they come to expect it and it becomes a part of your norm, then it's just part of your operations. But when knowing that it's a great experience is part of your operations, but they're not quite sure how it's gonna look, that's even better. So what I love to see businesses do is, um, and the other thing is as your business grows, so are your needs. So you're not staying the same size, so the engagement's probably gonna change. Um, the goal is to get people talking about you, continue to surprise them, continue to impress them. So start with one thing or a couple things, implement it, get it totally rolled out, part of your everyday process, embrace it. Um, and then review its effectiveness. Is it working? Is it driving the kind of customer love that you're hoping for? If yes, keep it in place, add to it, layer on the next thing. If not, is it because it hasn't had enough time to work or does it need to be tweaked a little sort of see what, see how it's working. But if it's working great, put a system around it, make it work, review it. And then next year, look at it again. How are you going to amaze people the next year? How are you going to continue to love them? And you know, what's, has your customer profile changed when you review things, when you review your customer engagement, you want to look at, a couple different things. One is, has your business changed? So does your customer love need to change in your customer engagement? Also, has your customer profile changed? As you've grown over the year, have you found that you have more of one particular type of customer or another? Um, and 
or are you targeting new kinds of customers? So what's going to make the most sense for you going forward? Um, and so as you look at all of these things and you're, you're trying to sort of figure out, see what works for your business. So I've thrown out a couple of different ideas, but they're going to be, you know, that's, those are for your, but those are examples that have worked for those businesses and what makes sense for them and their customers. I would encourage everyone to look at your businesses and see what are your clients like? How do they like to be engaged with? How do they like, how do you connect and how do you deepen relationships with them and figure out something that works for your business? And I'm happy to take a quick call with anyone who's on the call or, you know, shoot me an email. Here's my contact info. I'm always available um, by phone or email more hours in the day than I probably should be. Um, but I'm happy to chat with any alumni anytime. Um, I, I really, the Syracuse Alumni Network has been phenomenal for me and I love the opportunity to be able to give back to it also. So if there's any questions I can answer now, I'm more than happy to do so. Um, but I'm also, you know, like I said, only a call or an email or a tweet away. Um, if anyone has any questions or wants to continue the conversation, I am always happy to continue chatting about it. It's my Loving on your customers is my favorite topic. So anyone, I see um, some folks are chatting right now. Yes, it looks like Lou, uh, Lance is typing. Typing. And I also just got an email um, that you can, anyone can pass along that yes, someone who had to drop off that was on the call, um, yes, it will be archived. And Jenna will send out that link. Yes, I yes, will I download it today download this it afternoon. Today. So probably the email with the link to the recording will be available tomorrow. And then also there will be a survey link in the email. And that will go out to all, um, not only live participants, but also anyone that uh, had registered and didn't even attend live. Looks like there's a question there from Laura. Sell engagement to your customers versus a cost per click campaign that leads me to a website where a purchase can be made. Um, I'm not sure I entirely understand the question, although I will say engagement is not necessarily about direct sales. It's, it impacts your sales by having customers talk about you. Um, okay, so um, it's not a direct sales strategy, for sure. It is much more about generating buzz and deepening relationships than direct sales. But I will tell you that engaged customers lead to more engaged customers. Um, it is not, it, it's, it's softer. It's not as measurable as a lead generation campaign where you can say, oh, I did this, I did this online ad and I got X number of clicks, which directly led to these sales. Um, it is much more about generating referrals and positive relationships than direct metrics. Do you have to work harder to make that point to your customers? Um, to my clients, yes and no. Um, not really, my clients have seen, um, they have seen the benefit of it. I work with all small businesses, so it's much harder when you're working with large businesses to get large businesses to understand this. Um, I have not seen it with small businesses because most small businesses want those relationships and they recognize that retention is much easier than new client acquisition. Um, retaining clients, retaining clients and keeping happy clients is less expensive than, um, is less expensive than trying to generate new leads all the time. Um, buzz does ultimately equal sales. So a lot of times with referrals, so let's say, um, Let's say there's there's a realtor that I know who um, they send, they have flowers that are delivered to their clients' new homes immediately after closing. So their, their clients get home to their new home and it says, welcome home, we're so happy for you, yada, yada, yada. 
that generates buzz. So the, that client is now going to tell their friends, oh my gosh, listen to what my realtor did. How nice is this? I got home and I already had flowers. Um, there are, there's a business that I got to interview for the book, the, a safari company that's in Africa. Um, they're in Zambia, really cool company. I wish I got to interview them in person. Um, but they have these surprise pop-ups for clients all the time or for their, for their guests and their visitors. Um, they overheard a, um, one of their, their weary travelers talking to her husband about at check-in how tired she was and they had to get dressed for dinner and all this stuff and how she just really wanted beans and toast. I believe this woman was from the UK. Well, wouldn't you know, she showed up at dinner and they had whatever the full meal was that they were offering that night, but they also had beans and toast ready for her. It took nothing else. They had the stuff in the kitchen already, but they created this really positive experience for this woman just by listening, just by being customer centric. Um, so it's not always gifts. Sometimes it's just all in how you engage with a client. And that customer then went home, told her travel agent, told all her friends, um, which all then eventually does generate sales for sure. Um, and also with online reviews. So these days we did, we certainly don't have enough time to go into all the ins and outs of online reviews, but online reviews are contributing more and more and more to sales. Um, folks are making decisions and people, customers and consumers are putting a lot of weight in online reviews. Um, there's, there's a lot of research that shows that they trust them as much as they trust friends and family reviews. And so happy customers directly relate to positive online reviews, which directly relates to greater sales. So it's, it's a longer connection in the sales cycle, but it's, uh, I think, almost more critical than chasing leads. Jenna, did you have anything else come in on your end? No, I haven't um, in terms of questions. I have one that uh, you might have said in the beginning, but I was trying to figure out all the audio issues, so I might have missed it. But um, we always uh, marvel at your name, your business name. How did you come up with that? Um, so popcorn and ice cream was as much what it was as what it wasn't. So... Um, when we, when I was starting the company, I did not want a name with, I didn't want a company name that had my name in it. I've heard from too many people that have their name in their company that that just was very limiting to them. Um, I didn't want something that had Washington DC in it, even though I am very much loyal to Washington DC. Um, I felt that would also limit the business. And then everything really creative that I came up with was already taken. So it was, it came up, I, I don't even remember, it came up somewhat randomly as just fun things and we were trying to think of fun names and fun words and it, it ended up just that it, it came together and it stuck and then there became, then there was a story behind it that just like there are endless flavors of popcorn and ice cream, um, so too were there endless small businesses and different ideas and that popcorn and ice cream are sort of the perfect combination of salty and sweet, which is necessary. All of those, ba all of those balancing acts are very necessary in small business also. So it came up for as much of what the story came after the name was chosen, to be honest, but um, then it stuck and everyone loved it. And here we are five years later. Yes. I love it. I think it's great. Um, Great. Well, thank you so much. I apologize about all of the audio issues. I've never had that happen before. The call-in phone wasn't supposed to be an option, so um, I will work that out for next time. I'm always learning something new. Thank you um, to the participants and uh, Lawrence specifically for your questions. I will, like I said, send the link out this afternoon or tomorrow after I download it this afternoon, um, and please feel free to follow up with Hillary or myself about any questions or concerns. Um, moving forward. Awesome. Thank you, Jenna. Have, everyone have a good week and a good holiday. Thank you. Everyone enjoy your day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.